So, I guess I'm back. Hey guys, folks, I thought I would try this one again. I have finally some extra energy and time to work on a podo again. And there's a, a little project I'm thinking about. Yeah, yeah. That might be a nice one to uh, take you along with and see what happens if I put the whole process on YouTube again. And that project uh, is existent in here. Let me wait for the delivery truck to disappear. And strictly speaking, it's in here. If you saw other videos of me uh, of mine here may have seen me talking about this thing. Uh, what I want to do is invent a method to open uh, stuff like this. So like uh, rip it open, take stuff out and make it as simple and as extensible, extensible I guess, as possible. I'm thinking of turning this object, which is just now now simply a uh, mesh with a collider, um, into kind of a sequenced object, so to say. So what happens is when you rip it open, it turns into a different mesh with like uh, maybe loose bits, and then you see stuff inside, and as soon as you start pulling from that same object outwards, it spawns an object in your hand and the mesh uh, takes the next step in the sequence and removes its uh, contents, so to say. Bit weird to try and explain in words, but I thought, let me try and explain what I'm planning so you can uh, follow what I'm gonna do and see how that original plan fails later. Here we are. Uh, this is the original uh, mailbox uh, file. Um, and I just thought it might be smartest to simply build on this and build the various stages of this mesh. I think it should be a bit boring to watch, so I'm gonna try and see if I can do like a time lapse of it. So just tiny quick updates, uh, we have this one here, it's the original, this is now the opened envelope bit with a special tear off bit and you can look into it. I had to, uh, let me solo this, I like uh, how this shading on this one looks better than the shading on this one, so I uh, turned down the phone angle at which the smoothing happens and I always try to uh, have eight because obviously in low poly form you can also keep your angle at zero and have all the poly showing but I like it if there's a bit of smoothing on the close to planar polygons like this big one over here for those of you who were wondering what I was doing okay uh, let me continue. Just thinking out loud. I think this should be actually for now enough. There we go. And oh, uh, let me see. It's over here. And this is all part of a big um, one big prefab system and I don't really like that too much so I'm gonna pull this one out turn it into its own prefab over here oh I 
suddenly remember that there's also a, like a auto burning uh, thing inside of here. We will have to decide how to work with that because it's nice that you can burn stuff like this, but maybe because this is now turning into a story item, we don't need the auto burn elements anymore. So let's just remove it for now. So here's our stuffed envelope, our new stuffed envelope. Let's first group it up into uh, stuffed se sequence and uh, stuffed envelope sequence. And move some stuff out of its functionality into uh, the new master object. Boss glider should obviously stay on the mesh thing. It's got, hmm, it's got a special, yeah. It's got some special stuff on it so that it pops out of the mailbox when it is opened, but that goes for, I think, the stuff over here. So it's got a fixed joint here that probably gets deleted as soon as it gets grabbed here. I'm simply gonna remove all that stuff for now. Remove. It is an inventory object. It just means that you can stuff it into your uh, inventory. It's not yet a persistent object. That will all come later. Okay, um, I'm gonna redo this a bit. Let me just uh, duplicate this for a new parent. So this is the actual stuff envelope, the sequence object. This is the first stage of uh, the object. By the way, uh, I'm making this up as I go along. I never uh, implemented uh, a sequence system like this. So bear with me. Uh, this might horribly fail. Uh, there may be things I'm not um, considering right now that I will be considering <laughs> once I start implementing this. So. The master object here should uh, not have a mesh renderer and not a mesh filter. It should have a rigid body. It should not have this box collider because that can just be inside of the sequences. The it should have the handle here. Uh, and let's just uh, keep it as an inventory object. Then this is kind of stage one. I may want to have that grouped. Stage one. Just because I can imagine that a next stage will uh, consist of multiple objects. I'm not sure yet, but let's see how far we go. Yes. So this is just a mesh, not a rigid body. This is really just a representation of the object. Not a handle, uh, not an inventory object. This is just a box collider and a mesh. And strictly speaking, I can already create stage two here. And that might have the same box collider, but simply a different mesh. Now if we hide stage one here, oh, we should have the opened envelope here, stage two. So cool. Okay, that's the uh, big idea. So I'm gonna have to write a behavior on this one that in, uh, how do you say, at a certain instance in time, um turns the object from this one 
into this one. Should be doable, right? And have some extra stuff in here with some extra functionality that simply gets, gets disabled as soon as stage two is reached. Um, let me uh, set this up off camera uh, for a bit so we can have a little test drive. Uh, funny so um, so far so good I just it's a bit slow I don't know why it's so slow but uh, I just put uh, functionality on like the uh, secondary button here that uh, switches between stages now I'll run you through it in a moment but this seems to work Obviously, we want to trigger it a different way. Can I just hang it in the air? Yes. Okay. Let me... Uh... Can I still burn it? Oh, I don't have a lighter with me. Fine, fine, fine. One funny thing, by the way. I just discovered that my inputs are the wrong way around. Uh, let me think, let me think, let me think. I can uh, obviously fix this now, but I should actually... Yeah, I should fix this in input. Project settings, input. This is still the old-fashioned system. But let me see. I have primary right and primary left R. I'm going to need to make a note here. Uh, prim right and left were... Uh, 0 and 2, so right and left are 0 and 2, 0 and 2, sec, uh, right and left were, uh-huh, I've been burned too many times just switching this over without making notes, secondary right is 1 and 3, one and three should be turned around so secondary right and left should be zero and two uh zero two one and three let me just very quickly check this works because yeah are we playing yes because on the primary uh, button or the secondary button I had uh, like a quick little um, platform switch and I thought that steam simply didn't give primary and secondary buttons but it seemed I was mistaken and that I can use the secondary button. I just had my inputs put on wrong. And what happens now is that with the primary button I can switch stages in this object. Both hands. Very good. I don't know how clear this is uh, on the video for you. But, okay, let me run you through how this all works. <coughs> It's kind of simple. Let me see. Where is the thing? Here's the thing. Um, no, 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 no. I'm clicking the wrong thing. Obviously, I'm always clicking the wrong thing. Okay, let's can go now. <clears throat> so I'm uh, I'm just uh, needing a uh, link to my Nuver handle. I'm not sure. Last time we spoke. Uh, 
did I already have Nuver system implemented, or were, was I still messing with the uh, Newton VR system? New VR system is my own uh, VR interaction system. Uh, and it exists of handles and hands and hats and players and stuff. So the handle is just this here. Oh, I pressed save, so we're recompiling. It just finds a reference to that over here. Then I have a list of game objects for all the stages. I like to initialize that over here and then just clear it in a wake because that saves on typing. And I here I just run through all the child transforms and add the game objects to the list stages. Set the active list to the current stage. And the only thing that does is over here. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> it takes care of that. It stays within uh, the limits of uh, the list index. And then it simply runs through all the stages and activates the one where, oh god, my tablet and Windows are not working together, where uh, it, the index is uh, equal to the current stage. So it only sets active if it's the current stage. And each update, it checks if the hand if it, the handle is being handled. So, if it's being held by uh, the user, and the primary input here is down, then it sets uh, it just increases the active stage. So that's it. Um, that's the basics. That should be good and enough for a uh, first. Uh, a episode because this is going to be pretty multi episode i am sure but i'll leave it at this for now and continue working on it so see you later thanks for watching bye bye